channel. Today we're going to be talking about a really old case that still to this day is not solved. There's a lot of conspiracies and theories revolving around this case and to this day people will still debate and argue on what actually happened. So as we go on, leave in the comments what you think actually happened and let me know your opinions. But if you're into conspiracy theories and true crime and Mandela effects and just all that cool stuff, then subscribe to my channel because that's pretty much going to be the gist of this. Maybe some other things here and there. So that's what we're going to try and focus on. So we're just going to get started because this case is, it's kind of a lot. This case is who put Bella in the witch elm tree. So this dates back all the way to April of 1943 um, when Bryn was just in the midst of World War II. They had a lot of raiding and food rationing problems and stuff like that. Four teenage boys decided to trespass onto Hagley Estate to try and look for food for their families. They found a really big creepy tree. They decided to see if any of these trees had bird's nests or just eggs or anything so they could take it home to their family. One of the teenage boys climbed up this really big creepy tree and they saw an egg or what they thought was an egg. But as they got closer and he started messing with it, he realized it was actually a woman's head. When the boys took a closer look at the head, they saw that there was actually a patch of flesh still on her head and she still had some hair and her front two teeth were actually crooked. But since they were trespassing and they weren't supposed to be out and stuff like that, the four boys decided to keep it a secret. But of course, there's gonna be that one person that can't really keep a secret or they're gonna be too traumatized or scared to keep to themselves. So the youngest boy actually told his father what they found in the Hagley estate, told them about the woman's head and whatnot. So they contacted the police and the police came out to take a look at the body. When the police got there, they found in the massive hollow tree trunk that there was the remains of a human woman's skeleton. There weren't many things or clues that the police could like go on to like continue this investigation. They did find that she was wearing women's clothing and a fake gold wedding ring. But overnight, this is when the case started to take a turn and like they kind of figured this might be a bigger thing than it really is of just like a random woman's body and there might be like a, more of a story to it. Overnight in Birmingham, the police did find a spray painted wall that read, who put Bella down the witch elm. And this is when police kind of figured that things might start to take a weird turn and like they should probably dive more into it and look into this case. And to this day, this phrase will randomly pop up in Birmingham. Obviously it's just people like being stupid and pulling pranks and stuff. But to this day, it is like a local known legend and like people talk about it all the time. To this day, this is one of Britain's most greatest unsolved mysteries and they're probably never gonna find out what happened. Like I said in the beginning, there were a lot of conspiracies and theories around this case. One of them being that this was a ritualistic type of murder type thing. Putting a body in a witch elm tree is considered a big part of witchcraft and it's like known in the witchcraft community. So many people do think it was some type of witchcraft, ritualistic type murder. But this one is the most popular one. Well, they're both pretty popular, but this one definitely grabs a lot more of attention. People think that the woman that was put in the tree was actually a German spy and she was murdered because she like crossed her enemies or she failed her mission that she had to do. But that is like one of the most popular theories out there that she was a German spy. Keep in mind at this point, they do not know the woman's identity. They don't know her name is Bella. That's not what they call her. She's just a woman that they found in the tree. In 1943, a forensic biologist did examine the body and he said that this case is something that haunts him for the rest of his life because it's just, it's a mystery. The forensic biologist did say that it was an excellent place to hide a body as it was on a remote private property, so it would have taken a long time for anyone to find the body. And that was the case. The body wasn't found until 18 months after the woman had died or been murdered. The forensic biologist did eventually find out that she was around 35. She might have had a baby, but that was inconclusive, so they never really confirmed that. But they did know she was 35, but they could not find out her name or like who she actually was other than her age. He also said that he believes that she was put into the tree very soon after she died. They also found a peach colored fabric from her skirt that was inside of her mouth. So they were thinking that she could have been suffocated. So again, this brought back to the conclusion that she was murdered, but there were still a lot of debates about it and like no one really agreed on anything. The four boys did come forward and they said they were the ones who wrapped cloth around a stick and wedged it in her mouth so they could put her skull back in the tree where they found her. Now this body, they did have distinct teeth, but even with the distinct teeth, they could not find out her identity for anything. They tried and they just had no idea who this woman was. She was just still a mystery for years. They did compare her body and description to a lot of missing person reports, but it just didn't match any of them. So it was none of the missing persons that were on record. Now you might be thinking, why didn't they just do a DNA test? The DNA test couldn't even be an option anymore because they did give the body to the university, but then the bones just disappeared out of nowhere. And the West Midlands police did confirm that they did not have her body and they don't know where it is. 
Um, another said that there was no official documentation of the body ever being there, so the bones just disappeared. Again, this was when World War II was going on, so people didn't really pay attention to the case anymore. They kind of just like let it go because they were so focused on the war that was going on, but someone was determined they would not let people let go of it, and they ended up riding on the side of a building who put Bella in the witch elm tree. When police found this, they had their first clue that the woman's name was Bella. This is how they put it together. Um, and then they continued to look further and deeper into the case. There was also a lot of debate on who was writing this around Birmingham and on these walls and all these buildings and stuff like that. People thought it was her murderer. People thought it might've been an ex-lover, ex-boyfriend, whatever, or a friend, but no one knew who it was. People were also thinking it was just a neighborhood prank by some boys and stuff like that. But again, to this day, no one knows who was writing the letters there. But they have her name, but they still could not find out anything about her, her identity, or even her last name. They had her first name and that was it. So the case eventually went cold because they're they had no leading points or anything until 10 years later. So Wilford Byford Jones was a local journalist and he wrote a bunch of articles about the tragedy and the story of Bella and the witch elm tree, what happened. So after he wrote this, he did get a new lead and it came forward. A woman named Anna actually came forward. Again, this is 10 years later after, after the case went cold. So Anna actually wrote to the local newspaper and she said, said the one person who could give the answer is now beyond jurisdiction of the earthly court. She said the person responsible for the murder was Dutch and arrived in England illegally in 1941, but he actually died from being insane in 1942. But that's all Anna ended up writing. She said she had no wish to recall anymore. So that's all they got from Anna. Local authorities did get a hold of this. And so they kept encouraging Anna to come forward. And eventually she did. The local journalist did claim that he was sworn to secrecy and him and the police and Anna all secretly needed. He did end up writing something five years later of how they met up at the Dick Whittington Inn, but it's not true how much he wrote was true. Anna ended up recalling that her husband, Jack Mossop, came home a night very white and agitated in her words. And she said this was one night in either March or April of 1941. Jack had told Anna that he had been at the Littleton Arms with a Van Rolt and a Dutch piece. This Dutch piece was presumably to be Bella. And it is said that Bella passed out in the car on their way home and she was with Jack that night. Van Rall actually ended up telling Jack to drive into the woods and put the woman in the tree so she could wake up the next morning and come to her senses and she could find her own way out and about. But Bella was actually dead and she never woke up when she was put in the tree. So when Jack found this out, he actually died from going insane from being haunted by the image of him putting her in the tree. He ended up dying in a mental hospital from going insane in 1942, a year before Bella's body was found in the tree. William Douglas Osborne was actually given the task of keeping an eye on the crime scene when the case was first going on. And then his son, Peter Douglas Osborne, actually ended up taking up the case and following it since the 1970s. His father basically introduced him to the case by taking him to the crime scene when he was a kid and pointing at the witch elm tree and you're like, oh yeah, there was a body in there. This is when we start getting into the German spy theories, so hold on for this one. So again, there are theories about her being a German spy. They think that she was a part of a German spy ring that was being operated in Birmingham. There were munition factories all around and a ton of secret locations that would be totally beneficial for England's enemies to know about, so they think that she had insight on that. So going back to Anna, when she had her meeting with the local journalist, by Ford, they met up and Anna actually ended up telling him that Anna and her husband Jack were working together. It is said that Bella and Jack were working together in a German conspirators group to obtain intelligence about the aircraft munitions and the weapons all in the West Midlands. The mystery deepened years and years later when the UK spy agency released wartime files of one of their enemies named Joseph Jacob. It is said that Joseph Jacobs parachuted into Cambridgeshire in 1941. He was handed over to the police after farm workers found him walking into a field. And then when the police obtained him, they found a picture in his pocket of a girl. The picture of the woman in his pocket was later identified as a singer and actress, and her name is Clara. People started thinking that Clara and the woman that was found in the tree were linked together because there were some similarities being found. Some people claim that Clara was a working spy and she may have parachuted into the area on where the remains were found of Bella, but there was no parachute found in the crime scene of where the remains were, so that theory was already completely disproved. Again, the body was found to be reported in a witch elm tree, but Mr. Osborne said that she was actually found in a different type of tree, the type to ward off evil. 
Again, the woman's name is Bella for the hundredth time, but the name Belladonna has actually been linked to witchcraft since the Middle Ages. It's been known to be used for deadly nightshade. There's also a bunch of speculation if wild animals were involved because her remains were found scattered all around, so the police were like, it was wild animals who did that. There were also reports that claimed that her hand was severed, but this was disputed. But Margaret Murray, who was an anthropologist and archeologist, did suggest that this was a sign of witchcraft. She is quoted saying that the very act of placing a body in a hollow witch tree is associated with witchcraft. The cult of tree worship is an ancient one and it is linked with sacrifice. Other people also just think that she died at the hands of a sadistic killer who knew absolutely nothing about witchcraft and it's all just a huge coincidence. In 2014, a group of researchers at Queen Mary University in London were actually asked to help with the investigation. They basically made a report of a bunch of statistical reasoning on who did this to Bella and how could it have happened. The statistics found that it was a 99% likely that the cause of death was criminal, and it was also 97% that Bella was not British. They also found that there was a 33% chance that Jack Mossop was involved in the crime, and they also found it was 7% that some type of intelligence service was behind it. Flash forward, finally in 2018, an expert actually has a lot of experience in rebuilding faces and like finding missing persons in cold cases and stuff like that. So he put Bella's face back together and put it out there in hopes that someone would come forward and maybe they found some old photographs or something. It was like, oh, I was related to her or something like that. And they could finally identify her but no one came forward and then in 2005 the case was finally put to rest and there has been no movement since then and to this very day the search for bella and her killer still continues because no one knows if it was actually jack or not there's still tons of people having debates and conspiracies and different theories and whatnot but we're not gonna find out <laughs> we're not anyway so that's all for this video it was a fun one i had a lot of fun researching it um, it was a lot more than I thought. I did not think it was gonna have like all these German spy theories and stuff, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, if you have any suggestion of true crime things, it could be ones that aren't even that known. It can be popular ones, I'll still cover it. Um, but if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna try and post as much as I can. And I will see you in the next video.